so as a part of the continuation of the prolonged qt interval let me discuss the very important topic that is the torsades d pointers so torsades d pointers it is the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia right it's a ventricular tachycardia but it is polymorphic so the qrs complexes will be of varying morphology now why do you think that they are having the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia because the ventricular arrhythmia whichever is originating it is from multiple ventricular foci right it is from multiple ventricular foci so thereby what will happen to the qrs complexes is the qrs complexes they have the varying amplitude and as well as the axis right so if you take this particular qrs complex you see the amplitude of this qrs complex the amplitude is very large <clears throat> and if you take the qrs complex of this particular complex right it is a small complex so polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is a form of ventricular tachycardia in which there are multiple ventricular foci with the resultant qrs complex varying in amplitude axis and duration okay so there will be varying amplitude axis and as well as the duration and the commonest cause of the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is the myocardial ischemia so myocardial ischemia it is the commonest cause of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia now apart from the myocardial ischemia the other etiology for this polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is the prolonged qt interval right prolonged qt interval so that is the other etiology of the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia now in these patients with the torsades d pointers the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is mainly because of the multiple ventricular foci now for the torsades d pointers to be diagnosed for torsades d pointers to be diagnosed the two important criteria that the patient should have is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia should be there and as well as the qt prolongation should be there so these are the two important criteria for the torsades d pointers so you have to understand one important point now that is this polymorphic ventricular tachycardia can be due to two reasons now one it could be due to myocardial ischemia and second it could be because of the qt prolongation and the polymorphic ventricular tachycardia whichever is occurring because of the qt prolongation that is what is called as torsades d pointers right that is what is called as torsades d pointers now what is the clinical significance of this particular torsades d pointers most of the time this particular torsades d pointers it is short lived and self terminating right so it is short lived and as well as the self terminating and these patients they will have hypotension and they can have the cardiovascular collapse so they are associated with it. hemodynamic instability and as well as the cardiovascular collapse now what are we very much worried with these patients with the torsades d pointers they generate or degenerate into ventricular fibrillation it is because these patients they degenerate into ventricular fibrillation it is because these patients they degenerate into ventricular fibrillation they will end up in the cardiovascular collapse now what are the secondary causes for this particular torsades d pointers the secondary causes include mainly electrolyte abnormalities and this particular electrolyte abnormalities they are in the form of hypomagnesemia hypokalemia and as well as the hypocalcemia so in all these conditions there is prolonged qt interval so electrolyte abnormalities and as well as the medical conditions what are those medical conditions i will tell you so hypokalemia may precipitate torsades d pointers in a patient with the congenital long qt syndrome 
Now, what are the management strategies like whenever there is torsades depointers? You need to give one gram of the magnesium sulfate, right? So magnesium, isoprenalin, and as well as the overdrive pacing. So these are the treatment options like whatever you have to incorporate when the individual lands up in torsades depointers. And next you see the pathophysiology of torsades depointers. Torsades depointers, it reflects the prolonged myocyte repolarization. Okay. And this prolonged myocyte repolarization that is mainly due to the ion channel malfunction. Right? That is mainly due to the ion channel malfunction. And that is the reason why you will have prolonged QT interval and as well as the individual lands up in the torsades D pointers. Now, followed by now, followed by question related to torsades D pointers. Torsades D pointers is caused by hypermagnesemia, metabolic acidosis, hypomagnesemia, metabolic alkalosis. Now, just now we have discussed electrolyte abnormalities that is hypomagnesemia, hypokalemia and hypocalcemia. They are the one which will cause the prolonged QT interval and makes the individual to land up in what is called torsades D pointers. Now, you see the conditions where you have the congenital long QT syndrome. See, in an underlying patient of the congenital long QT syndrome, if there is superimposed hypokalemia, then there is high chance that these individuals, they will land up in the torsades D pointers. So, now what are the congenital causes for the prolonged QT syndrome? One is romano wild syndrome and the other one is the Gerwell and Lange-Nielsen syndrome. See, in both of these conditions, you have the prolonged QT interval. But an additional point in Gerwell and Lange-Nielsen syndrome is they will have the sensory neural hearing loss. Right? They will have sensory neural hearing loss. Whereas in Romanoval, the individual will have the normal hearing. Right? And what is the treatment for these patients with the congenital long QT syndrome? Right? That you, you need to give the beta blockers. So in these patients, if there is superimposed hypokalemia, these are the individuals where they will develop prolonged QT interval and make the individual to land up in what is called torsades D pointers, which is nothing but polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. So, what will be the presentation of these patients with a congenital long QT syndrome? The presentation will be in the form of the syncopal attack. So, these individuals, they present with the syncopal attack due to the torsades D pointers. And because of this particular syncopal attack, they may present with sudden death due to ventricular fibrillation. Right? They may present with sudden death due to the ventricular fibrillation. So, this is the presentation either in the form of syncopal attack due to torsades D pointers, or they may present with sudden death due to ventricular fibrillation. So, they may degenerate, right? They may degenerate into ventricular fibrillation where the individual will develop what is called the sudden cardiac death. Now, the other important point is most competitive sports, they are contraindicated for patients with a congenital long QT syndrome, right? For patients with a congenital long QT syndrome, the competitive sports, they are contraindicated, right? That is very important. Why? They may have either syncopal attack or they may degenerate into ventricular fibrillation where they can present with the sudden cardiac arrest. So that is the reason why the most competitive sports, they are contraindicated, absolutely contraindicated. Now, followed by that, you take the clinical conditions that are associated with reduced repolarization reserve. That is, patient predisposed for marked QT prolongation and resultant torsades D pointers. So, which group of individuals they have marked QT prolongation and where they may land up into torsades D pointers? Number one, the congenital long QT syndrome that is Gerwell and Lange Nielsen syndrome and number two, Romano Wild syndrome. And the next thing is acquired long QT syndrome that is caused by drugs and medications. I'll tell you what are those drugs and medications. 
नेक्स्ट ब्राडी कार्डिया फीमेल जेंडर वेंटिकुलर हाइपरट्रोफी एंड इलेक्ट्रोलाइट अबनॉर्मैलिटीज और इलेक्ट्रोलाइट डिस्टर्बेंसेज सच एज हाइपोकेलीमिया एंड एज वेल एज द हाइपो मैग्नीसीमिया सो दीज आर द क्लिनिकल सिनारियोज वेयर द इंडिविजुअल मे लैंड अप इन टू द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द टॉर्सेट्स डी पॉइंट इज नाउ फॉलोड बाय दैट लेट मी गिव यू द लिस्ट ऑफ ड्रग्स सी मोस्ट ऑफ दीज ड्रग्स आर योर एंटी एर्दमिक ड्रग्स राइट इफ यू टेक द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द एंटी एर्दमिक ड्रग्स वी हैव फोर क्लासेस एंड फॉलोड बाय दैट क्लासिफाई इट इज मिसलेनियस ड्रग्स एंड नाउ वी हैव अ न्यू क्लासिफिकेशन where it has been classified up to class 7 and as well as class 8 as well but group of anti arrhythmic drugs which will cause prolonged qt interval is class 1a that is quinidine procainamide and disopiramide and then you have class 1c that is flecainide and as well as the enkenide right 1c that is flecainide and as well as the enkenide and class 3 group of anti arrhythmic drugs that is sotalol and amiodarone okay so anti arrhythmic drugs include quinidine procainamide and disopiramide and class 1c group of drugs that is enkenide and as well as flecainide and class 3 group of anti arrhythmic drugs include sotalol and as well as the amiodarone then we have the sodium channel blockers that is tricyclic antidepressants antibiotics like macrolides and as well as cortrimoxazole and terfenidine this particular terfenidine mainly whenever it is combined with the macrolides and not only that certain group of quinolone antibiotics also will cause the prolonged qt interval so these are the group of drugs which will cause the torsades de pointes and electrolyte abnormalities already i have mentioned that is hypokalemia hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia these are the three important electrolyte abnormalities which can cause the prolonged qt interval now what will be the treatment of this acquired prolonged qt interval the treatment of acquired prolonged qt interval it includes correction of the underlying cause right the correction of the underlying cause then overdrive pacing that is atrial or ventricular overdrive pacing and then magnesium sulfate should be given intravenously that is a treatment for the acquired prolonged qt syndrome now followed by that you see some of the questions related to your torsades d pointers torsades d pointers is seen in all except hyponatremia hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia hypokalemia let me tell you all your hypos except hyponatremia except hyponatremia you will have the torsades d pointers in all other electrolyte abnormalities but hyponatremia will not cause right will not cause the torsades d pointers now if you take the features of the torsades d pointers you see the next question feature of the torsades d pointers is right you can have a simple question like that wide qrs complex short qrs complex prolonged qt interval short qt interval so in torsades d pointers what is that you will have the prolonged qt interval now let me just show you an ecg with prolonged qt interval degenerating into polymorphic ventricular tachycardia right so you see this particular ecg here so initially if you observe there is prolonged qt interval right if you calculate the qt interval is more than 460 milliseconds and this prolonged qt interval it is degenerating into polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and this is what is called as torsades d pointers right this is what is called as the torsades d pointers so this is about the abnormalities of the qt interval so if you take the normal qt interval right you see this table here the normal qt interval it is from 
to almost 440 milliseconds right but whenever the qt prolongation is there 450 470 right so these are the patients where they have the high risk right these are the patients they have the high risk of development of vt ventricular tachycardia and short qt interval less than 360 milliseconds is your short qt interval and if it is less than 330 it is very short qt interval and if it is more than 470 it is very long qt interval okay so these patients with very long qt interval or very short qt interval those are the group of individuals where they have the high risk of abnormal clinical scenarios so this completes the discussion of abnormalities of the QT interval. Thank you very much.